morning everyone today is the first day of tracing the footsteps of Ibn Battuta uh, we will be going today to the world famous Qutub Minar which is not just the Minar but it's also the the compound in which there is the Minar there is a fabulous iron pinner about which uh, Ibn Battuta also talks at length so let's go and see what he saw and revisit the places that he loved liked and wrote about let's go Well, the Alai Minar could never be completed because the Sultan died. The next Sultan after him also intended to complete the Minar. But then there are always tales that are associated to the bad luck that such a monument can bring. And therefore the Minar was left the way it is. And this minaret, which is so beautiful, standing tall but very rugged, right here facing the Qutub Minar, tells you anyway of the dimension that they were aiming to achieve with something like this. It was supposed to be double the size of the Qutub Minar. And it is a huge broad base that you can see. And Ibn Battuta talks extensively about the size of this Minar and measures it in terms of how many elephants could walk abreast inside the main space of this bottom part of the Minar. Along with the beautiful Qutub Minar which we just saw. We are now in the western port of the Qutub complex and as you can see behind me is something which looks like a quasi minaret. Something that could have been a minar but is not. Well this is famously known as the Alai Minar which was also mentioned by our friend Hibin Ibn in his memoirs. He spoke extensively about this complex and about practically each and every one of the monuments that we find here, even the walls and the fortresses. The interesting thing about this Minar, as he says, that this was supposed to be, that the Sultan Qutb al-Din wished to build one more Minar after the Qutb Minar, which was supposed to be double in size to that of Qutb Minar. It is obvious, isn't there this Freudian male complex related to size of Minar? So clearly, the emperor at that point really wanted for it to be a bigger minar. Behind me is the majestic Quwwatul Islam. Known as the Quwwatul Islam, the might of Islam, it is the earliest extant mosque in India. And well, it was there when, when Ibn Battuta traveled these spaces. This mosque was built, it, be, it began in 1100s, towards the end of 1100s by Qutbuddin Ebal. But then it was left incomplete. And what Ibn Battuta wrote about it is this, and I quote him, called Quwwat al-Islam, the strength of Islam, in the original Rajput city, and as I be correctly states below, built on the site of a Hindu temple. This beautiful mosque, as you can see, is lined with columns and pillars with geometrical patterns and inscriptions. Subsequently, the mosque was enlarged by later rulers 
Shamsuddin Altamish and Alauddin Khilji. The screens of these two sultans are carved with purely Islamic motives, abounding in geometric patterns all around here. Let's take a closer look. The Qutub complex today is an interesting study of ethnography. You can see people from various cultural groups, various countries, foreign tourists, Indians, school children, college goers, old people and young. Everyone comes here to taste that little bit, bit of history which Ibn Battuta tasted centuries and centuries ago and wrote about it in his memoirs.